lovelies and welcome back to my channel um it is sunday march 20 something hold on march 28th so i hope everyone had a great weekend um today is kind of like gloomy rainy ugh. tmi mother nature is out for delivery so i'm not in like the cheeriest moves, but I figured I needed to get a video out. So, what's better than story time? So, before I go any further, hit that subscribe button. Please, 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 please. Like button, comment, all that good stuff. Show me some love. I would love it. I would appreciate it. I would hug you if I could, but still six feet apart so we're gonna elbow it real quick and we'll blow kisses from afar but anyway <sighs> this story time is going to be i'm gonna title this how my catfish became one of if not my best friend of my closest friends Ooh. we're gonna title it that so get your drinks your snacks if it's a little chilly, get your favorite little blanket, your hoodie, cardigan, whatever, and buckle in because I'm going to take you down memory lane. <sighs> Let me also preface this by saying, one, ignore the hair. It's supposed to be wash day, but I really just don't have the energy to do it. Two, if you hear Cocomelon in the background, you already know who it is, my lovely little munchkin. Um who insists on sitting right next to me when I record. And number three, I may not be like 100% accurate with the dates, but just focus on the story. I mean, the dates are important, but just, just roll with me, bear with me, bear with me. So let's get into it. Wow, well, I've only told like, uh, a good three people in my life this story um, obviously besides me and my friend so hmm, I want to ballpark it and say this happened in 2013 um, I used to be really 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 into Xbox um, I still am but I just don't have the time to play it as much because of little munchkin she insists on putting the joysticks in her mouth so yeah <laughs> so I can't really you know sit and enjoy it as much I still have a one but it's mostly used for like Netflix and YouTube and Disney plus and uh, Amazon and just basically it's used for like movie and entertainment purposes. So I haven't really sat down and played a game in um maybe like five years. So anyway, I was playing GTA. Um I used to be heavy into GTA, like rage, almost broke the controller, like that type. I mean I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing but yeah i used to be into xbox so one night little zo moi was playing gta online and um i'm gonna have to cut this hold on where was i oh yeah i was playing gta online one night and um i happened to be the only girl online that night i don't know what was going on maybe i got the menu that uh the menu you hear me memo that um no girls were allowed in this uh i can't even tell you what they're called sessions i think they're called sessions that's how long i haven't played so anyway um i was getting like massacred by this like one dork who i'm pretty sure lives in the attic somewhere with his mom and like dissects dead animals I'll never forget his name. I think his name was Kevin. I think his name was Kevin. I don't know. So anyway, when I tell you I was getting massacred, I mean, every time I, like, after I died and I appear, I don't know. I'll put the words on the screen, the right words. When I would appear back somewhere after I died, he would literally be 
like on his way i could see on the map like he would be on his way to kill me like i don't know what happened maybe my voice reminded him of a girl that broke his heart or i don't know but this dude was after me so i think so i think i got on the chat and i was like listen dude i don't know what the fuck is your problem but like leave me the fuck alone and um at this point i was like you know what let me get off the map and go do like a mission or something because this dude like had the craziest heart on for me and i could just not understand why like we had never spoken we're not fr you know what i mean like we're not friends you just know like those crazy kids that really just make playing online like the most horrifying experience like he just completely took the fun out of well whatever fun i was having at the time so i think i went to go do a mission and this is where catfish come so i think we did like a couple of missions I, I was the only girl that seems to be like the theme of like my life like in high school i was the only girl out of like seven dudes but i was like everyone's little sister so they would protect me and I'm not gonna lie i prefer hanging out with guys more than i do girls um i just don't have the patience for like the cattiness i mean as i've gotten older my mindset has changed but back then i was like really really like one of the guys you know i was that type of girl i was a chick you know i was a chick so anyway um where was i so um so I did a mission, only girl, I think it was like four of the dudes, and Catfish was in this group. So after the mission, I think we did really well, and then we were all like, hey, let's just add each other, like, and then we got back in like the regular map, and then that kid again came after me, and I was like, yo, like, can someone like tell this kid to leave me the fuck alone? Like, cause this shit is getting like out of hand now. Like, you know those kids that, like, just live to make other people's lives living hell? This was this kid. Like, that was that kid. Um, to this day, I just don't like him. But anyway, um, we all, like, shortly became friends. Um, so we added each other. And then gradually, like, every day, like, I would get on and we would play. And we would, like, sit and joke online and everything. So then, um... I think one of the dudes, he was, I mean, he was a, a weirdo, but he asked me like, oh, does like, do you have like a Facebook or something like that? Cause like, I want to see how you look. Cause most of the bitches on here are ugly or fat. And I'm like, like who hurt you, honey? Who hurt you? Um, so we, um, so I said, fuck it, I'll give you my Facebook. And I gave him my Facebook and Catfish was the first person to add me on Facebook. And then after like um, Catfish added me on Facebook, like we started talking on Messenger like every day. Like it was more so like, when are you going to get online today? You know, I was working at the time. So it was like, I don't know. Like when I get home, I'm tired, yada, yada, yada. So I would get on um, and like slowly like we developed a friendship so eventually like mind you like catfish's like main picture wasn't like their picture of like their face and i'll i'll tell you why i'm saying there instead of like he or her so um i was like eventually i was like um i talk to you like every single day i play with you all the time but like I don't know what you look like because clearly you see my picture you know what I look like so then catfish sent me a picture so catfish sent me a picture and I was in love the picture was of a guy very 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 attractive um I'm not gonna put the picture up I would but it's of a real person we'll get into that later so gradually again we just started talking eventually we just kind of like left the other kids that i met catfish through like the group we just started playing by ourselves 
talking eventually went from messenger and facebook to like texting on the phone all the time and when i tell you little old zoe was smitten i was like smitten you know like that phase where like you meet somebody and you're like this is the one that's what i thought like this is the one like he's so cool i could talk to him about everything like and he's fine i had to get something to drink because it's about to get like tea worthy in here but this is not tea iced coffee um so where was i oh yeah so i'm talking to this dude um what is what should we name him uh joseph we'll call him joseph so i'm talking to joseph every day i'm talking about like while I'm at work, on break, in a bathroom, sending selfies, like trying to get myself dolled up so I could take a picture. Couldn't wait till he texts me. Mind you, mind you, I've never like met this guy. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Never met this guy. Spoke to him on the phone, deep voice, all that. So then things like some months go by things start getting like really serious like falling asleep on the phone together and i'm sending like you know cute little pictures like i said some of them i may or may not have clothes on so then um i think around this had to be like around thanksgiving time at this point we are telling each other like i love you like we're declaring our love for each other on facebook on twitter all that so then around thanksgiving time obviously my family is starting to notice like who is she on the phone with so yeah my family's starting to notice like who are you who are you always on the phone with like my brother played xbox with me and like he would hear us flirting while we were playing and he, he was probably uncomfortable as fuck. So um, I eventually had to tell them like, hey, um, uh, I kind of met this guy named Joseph and like we're like an item and like we're in love and like that's it. And mind you, Joseph would talk like play with my brother and my nephew on Xbox like when he would call, he would talk to my mom. Hey, how you doing? Like, hope you had a good day. Things like that. Like he was slowly integrating himself into my family. And everybody was just like, he's mad cool. Like, oh, when can we meet this guy? Now, this is where we get to the Thanksgiving time. Hold on. Okay, so at this point, let me also say that I have been, like I said, we were claiming each other on Twitter, Facebook, we got each other's pictures up. We're take we're like doing the same poses and pictures and like putting them together and like, oh look, we're just meant to be. So Thanksgiving time comes and my mom is like, Hey, why don't you ask Joseph to come up? Like, I won't say the real state that joseph lives in let's just say maryland so my me and joseph and i have talked about it like oh you know i can't wait to see you and all this other stuff so i talked to joseph about it joseph is all for it like hey i'll just take a bus up and i'll just rent a hotel room for like a weekend so this is when it starts getting like hmm so I, I spoke to my mom about it like hey you know i'm gonna pick up joseph from the bus station on yada yada and we're gonna go to like his hotel room obviously i'm grown at this point so who cares um so like she thought nothing of it but she was like since it's thanksgiving like he could just come to the house shower and then we could just all have thanksgiving dinner together and i was like Mind you, my mother has never been like that cool, especially when it comes to like the opposite sex. Like, hey, just let this random dude shower in our house and like he can spend the night. Like that's how cool 
Joseph was to like my entire family. Like everybody had basically taken him in, but no one, including myself, had met this person in real life. So fast forward, Thanksgiving comes and goes. Joseph doesn't appear. I can't remember off the top of my head what excuse Joseph gave, but um, let's just say my family was very disappointed. My nephew had like started calling him big bro and like my uncle, all this other stuff. So I remember one night Joseph calls, like he had been ducking my calls the entire day. And I'm like, did I do something? Like what's going on? So that night joseph calls first he texts and he's like listen um i'm gonna call you in a minute i gotta talk to you about something i'm like oh shit like did someone die like like am i in trouble like when i tell you i was madly in love i was mad. so he calls and i could just tell like this is someone i've spoken to every single day all day for the past like almost a year so um he calls and i could just tell that something was up something was wrong and hold on so joseph calls and it's like hey i haven't been like completely honest with you for the past year and i'm like oh shit you have a girlfriend like don't tell me that like don't break my heart like you didn't come for thanksgiving like you haven't been like returning my calls all day that was that was the first thing i thought so he's like um all the pictures that i've been sending you are not of me you mean like the pictures that i've been showing my entire family you mean the pictures that like i've been putting up online saying online saying like this is my babe and like i'm like trying to pose like you in the pictures trying to be like corny and cute like, you mean the dude that's on my wallpaper on my phone? That's not you? Dead silence on the on the other end of the phone. I'm like... So at first I was like... At first I was like, okay. Like... Alright. It's not you on... It's not you on the pictures. Okay, so who is that guy? Now mind you... He was, he, Joseph was like, oh, you know, that's my friend. And I'm like, okay, does your friend know that you've been using his pictures? Yes. Okay. Red flag right there. Flag on the play. And, oh shit, I'm forgetting like one part of the story. Hold on. So I'm forgetting one part of the story. It's very, 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 very important joseph is into music right he produces music and all that go figure um he introduces me to one of his artists let's call this person i don't know uh pookie right he introduces me to pookie like so i you know as joseph's love was like okay let me promote pookie's music honestly his music was really dope so um mind you pookie thinks that the dude in the picture is also joseph so i wasn't the only person that joseph lied to mm. fast forward rewind back to the conversation i'm like so okay you're using your friend's picture what do you look like now like and at this point like a thousand things are running through my mind like that's not you in the picture oh shit i'm embarrassed what else have you been lying to me about so then joseph goes there's more there's more okay i remember i was like in my room in this very room and like I stopped what I was doing and I had to sit down because I was like, this is too much. This is too much. So Joseph goes, um, I'm also not a guy. Run that back again. You're not the dude in the picture, but you're not a dude. What the fuck? 
like, I need a drink. Like, now that I'm telling the story, I need a drink again. When I tell you, like, the same way that I can't find my words now, you could imagine, like, I couldn't find my words then, I can't find them now. But, like, I was just like, wait, you're a female? Like, oh, shit. Now, I'm going to get into, like, another in important part of the story. Now, mind you, um, when I met, met Joseph, I had just gotten out of a six year relationship with a female. Um, so Joseph came in like right at the tail end of when like her, me and her relationship was just about over. So Joseph was more of like, a clutch and I don't and I don't say that to diminish like what Joseph meant to me like over time but like he just he was the shoulder that I needed to cry on and then it's like you drop this bombshell on me that not only are you not the person in the picture you're not even a dude your name is not Joseph when I tell you, when I tell you, I hung up that phone so fast, I couldn't even tell you what she said to me. Now I can say she. I went into the bathroom and bawled. When I tell you, I haven't bawled that hard since I was pregnant with her. I bawled all night. She was calling me, calling me back, leaving me voicemails. I'm talking about like at least 40 missed calls like within an hour or something like that like she kept calling and I just couldn't find the words I was like no way I was like this is not happening to me like what did I do to deserve this like this is not real when I tell you when I tell you I hung up that phone so fast I couldn't even tell you what she said to me now I can say she. I went into the bathroom and bawled. When I tell you, I haven't bawled that hard since I was pregnant with her. I bawled all night. She was calling me, calling me back, leaving me voicemails. I'm talking about like at least 40 missed calls, like within an hour or something like that. Like she kept calling. And I just couldn't find the words. I was like, no way. I was like, this is not happening to me. Like, what did I do to deserve this? Like, this is not real. So I think I eventually called her back or might have picked up her call. And she was just like, just listen. Like, I, I know you're pissed, but just listen to me. And she went into detail about like why she did it and things like that and i remember the only thing i could say to her was like but why didn't you tell me earlier like mind you back then and now i don't know what my response would have been if she would have told me earlier look at the fat oh but um i don't know what her response would have my response would have been but I just remember that was the only thing I asked her. From that day on, I think I avoided all of her calls. I just had nothing to say. Like even my family started to realize like something's wrong with her. Nobody like legit, like nobody in my family put two and two together that it had something to do with Joseph, but people noticed that, you know, I just gradually stopped talking about Joseph. I wasn't on the phone, like, jonesing all day with Joseph. I even stopped getting on Xbox at this point. Um, like, anytime I would see, like, anything related to Joseph, like, I, like, I just felt sick. And let me say this. Um, obviously, I was in a six-year relationship with a female prior to Joseph. Um, I do not classify myself as bisexual lesbian any of that i just say i'm sexually fluid um i don't like labels and i don't like putting myself in a box but 
it wasn't and i and i say that to say that i say that to say that i say that to say like it wasn't so much that she um that she was a female she's texting me right now it wasn't so much that she was a female that bothered me it was the year-long lying that hurt me the most and the fact that like i introduced you to my family like i was more so embarrassed and hurt and angry and um and another thing i actually took like the picture of her friend i actually like put it on google i think i think at this at this time you could put somebody's picture on google and see like the truth about it so i put his picture on google and come to find out this dude has a bunch of fakes everywhere and i'm like how did i not know so as time went on um i eventually did sit down and like have a like I'm pretty sure it was hours long conversation with her. She did tell me her real name. Um, and she did tell me that basically everything that she told me that was Joseph's life was her life. The only lies were that the name and the gender and the picture, obviously. So um, over time, I think I kind of like... Mm, how do I put it like I understood where she was coming from I may not have understood why she did what she did and to this day um you know I still remember what she did to me but I don't hold it against her like I did before but it took a while so I think over time I forgave her um and we basically agreed that like we'll start over and she'll you know she'll kind of approach me as herself and yeah I, uh and i guess that's exactly what happened like um as i like got to know her, the real her better i realized that yeah her and joseph were essentially the same person it's just like i said the name gender and picture um she did send me a real picture of herself um and i think like i said i think it just took a while for us to rebuild but um like the title of this video like she has become one of my closest friends, if not my best friend. And we literally can like finish each other's sentences. Like we know each other's sense of humor. Like we like the same type of music. Like nothing really changed except for the fact that like I was addressing her by her real name. And to this day, she and I speak every single day. Um, we go through our ups and downs. Um, we we go through dry spells where like uh, we have an argument and then we don't talk for a couple of months. But every time we do talk, it's like it's like those couple of months didn't happen because like you know how like some people like two people may have a relationship that like literally only works for them like nobody else understands like how those two can be in a room or how those two can even like deal with each other or speak that's kind of like it's it's just that's just like the relationship that we have um it's kind of like we know what it is so it's like nobody else like we don't really care if nobody else gets it but it's like I just look at it now like how did we get here like how did she become one of my best friends after like lying to me after doing something so hurtful and so deceitful but I do feel like she just honestly made a mistake and I think um yeah she just made a mistake and I think that if she could do it over again I do think that she would have met me as herself because a lot of it had to do with like, she didn't think that she would be good enough 
for me and you know while I can't understand her position I do understand that feeling so it was like I wasn't going to necessarily beat her up for it and here mama I wasn't gonna beat her up for it and condemn her for ever for it you know it was like at this point I had grown to appreciate her for who she is outside of like everything that's happened if that hopefully that makes sense because it's like in my head it's completely different but um yeah she did come up to see me uh for one of my birthdays i can't remember which one because i'm old as hell but she did come up and we went out to eat and it was i think it was an experience that she and I both needed. We needed to, well me, I can't really speak for her, although I could, cause she's like, I know her, but um, I needed that. I needed to see her in her truest form, like flaws and all, everything that she was so afraid to show me and, and tell me, you know, um, I needed to see that. And I think that was really what helped me um, accept her more than ever it was that little birthday uh, weekend we had um, it's to the point where like even like when I got pregnant with little one over here like she's been someone that like I can call at like five o'clock in the morning when I'm having like a bad day or she knows like like literally she is my best friend like we know everything like I know what she's saying. I know when she's being a dickhead. I know when she's being sarcastic. I know when she's being funny. I know when she's going through something and she necessarily hasn't said anything. It works both ways. So, um, you know, I really do feel like our story is kind of like, you know, a story of like people need, you know, people, some people deserve second chances. And I think God doesn't put people in your life for no reason. So, I mean, I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed my little story time. Um, you know, if you guys like this story time, I'll probably do another one, maybe. I have to get some videos out this week anyway, so we'll see. But um, as usual, thank you for staying. Thank you for listening. And again, like, comment, and subscribe to your girl's channel. Um, I would really appreciate it. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day. And I will see you in my next video.